everybody. Welcome to the PAX Deep Dive Podcast. I'm Brian. This is Pastor Mandy, and this is Elder Lucas, oh, which <laughs> he loves being called that. And uh, no, for real, uh, Mandy and I are the lead pastors here at PAX, and Lucas is a house church pastor and elder and is joining us. We are talking through the scriptures from our most recent message here at PAX Church, given by Pastor Mandy on Gideon. And so that comes from Hebrews 11 verses 32 through 34, I think is where you started. And that says, and what more shall I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. That's the ESV version. That sounds very little like what you said. I mean, it, it does. does sound like it, but it's I also weird. I actually leaned over and checked. <laughs> it's like, what, <laughs> like, what are, are you reading? reading? This is yes, not what I read good, at though. all. It's a good one. But so we're starting off with that, um, jumping back to talk about Gideon um, saying that, and I love, I was just listening back to it because I was editing the sermon and uh at one point you go, we don't have time because we've only been in this for a year. So <laughs> <laughs> throw us under the bus. Well done. Um, we don't have time, but we do have time. We did have time. We, we took did. time to talk about Gideon because uh, and faith over fear. Yeah. I thought that was a good uh, angle on it. So, Mandy, um, tell us, what, what do we need to know about faith over fear and Gideon? Yeah, um, I think... Mm, was not prepared for that question. So, um, <laughs> sorry, I asked a relevant question. I, to the- <laughs> I know, and it was what I preached on Sunday, which was only two days ago. But um, I think the biggest lesson um, when it comes to faith and fear in the story of Gideon is is trusting God in spite of our fear, and mm-hmm. being able to move in faith um, through fear. Mm you know, and not letting fear dictate our actions. So, yeah, yeah, I think that was a con- a really strong theme throughout the entire account of Gideon. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> it sounded like you were going somewhere. I was. And that, then you but... said, mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, you have some more to say? No, go for, go I ahead. was encouraging you. Oh. <laughs> you should keep <laughs> um, No, I, yeah, I think it was, um, I think it was good. I, I, think that looking at how we can trust God in the face of our fears and not let fear dictate what we do um, is, yeah, a large piece of what drives Israel and throughout Judges, uh, but especially in this. And I thought it was crazy where Gideon is kind of terrified of everybody. He's hiding in a wine press. He's uh, treading grain in the wine press. Um, so that he can hide from the Midianites and not be, uh, not have his stuff taken um, as he's preparing it. And then when the angel of the Lord shows up, he's kind of afraid of him. And then he has this weird, like, like the Lord has abandoned us. He's like not even here anymore. Uh, kind of a <laughs> response to him. And yeah. he's like, where have you even been? Mm-hmm. And it, it's funny because then the first thing he does is he's instructed before he even gets to go to battle. It's like, Hey, you know, your dad set up this altar to a false God and you know, a couple of them, you have an Asherah pole and a, a, an altar to Baal. Would you mind actually tear those down and destroy them and offer some sacrifices to purify yourself and the land because you guys have turned away from me. Like Yahweh's sitting here like, what do you mean I haven't shown up? What are you doing? What is that thing? What is that about? What is that even? Like, <laughs> what, are you, what is wrong with you people? <sighs> but that's constantly how it is. Like, and, it, and I appreciate that you started there um, mm. when you read back in Judges 6 uh, and yeah. 7, starting with Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. God just releases them to that. And then they're like, oh, you've abandoned us. It's like, mm, mm-hmm. who abandoned who? It's like, I'm, I'm, right where I, I'm right where you left me. But y'all just turned and started doing your own garbage. 
and building, you know, false idols and, and having crazy parties around these other gods of the Canaanites. The exact thing I told you, when I give you this land, do not do this thing. Oh, that, th oh, we shouldn't do that. Th hey guys, let's do that thing. That's what they did over yeah. and over. Yeah. No fear of the Lord. Mm -mm. Lucas, fear of the Lord, go. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you Amen. have it? Good. That's good. All men. Okay, You're going to great. fear something. Feel, fear the Lord, right? Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's... Wait, wait to say it, Mandy. We're good. Amen. Pray out. Amen. All right. <laughs> Pray out. We're done. <laughs> Mic drop. Pray out. Um, yeah. What's the opposite? Yeah. The <laughs> Mic throw up? <laughs> <laughs> Mic throw up. If we could just throw up that on screen, that'd be great. So... <laughs> Podcast face, Mandy. I'm trying. <laughs> Are you I'm trying, trying or crying? I'm both. <laughs> All right, Lucas, go on. It, it's easy, I think, to throw Gideon under the bus. Yeah. Uh, if, if you like, take a step back and, mm. and look at what's going on here, I think it's very human of a response. Oh, and, yeah. and there's actually, in his response at the beginning, it's ballsy <laughs> like <laughs> yeah all right we're going like that yeah. okay. well because he says but if the lord is with us why has all this happened to us like that is sorry that is sorry. um <laughs> my bad if I, the lord is with us but considering who he's talking to yeah right why has all this happened to this yeah and, and that and that starts with the lord is with you yeah and so it's a it's a direct confrontation, it's a direct challenge, which yeah. for for Gideon, who is often painted as a very feel, fearful guy, which he is, yeah. But like that is a bold statement. Yeah. yeah. Um, his dad, in response to, you know, when everybody wakes up and all the idols are torn down, right. and all the all the townsfolk are out with their pitchforks, they're ready to or, yeah, they're ready, are to, ready to go after Gideon. Yeah. You know, like his dad shows that very similar vein of boldness i think mm -hmm. and it's like okay well they're related um yeah. <laughs> and that could easily have gone down gone you know wrong right um but it didn't no wrong correct <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so fear fear is yeah. uh a very big motivator at the core of who people are mm. yeah um and it's easy to look at somebody else who is exhibiting fear and like why, why are you doing that but you know, put yourself in that same situation and often yeah. people act very similar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love, that's actually what I loved about getting to preach on this is I felt like, um, first of all, I've never heard anyone talk about fear and Gideon before. And so like, I hadn't heard it preached that way. Usually it's oh. like Gideon, you know, like for God and for Gideon <laughs> and or for the Lord and for Gideon, you know? And so, you um, I've heard very different sermons. Yeah, we have, things. we've been in different <laughs> churches. So, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> not in the last 17 years. <laughs> <laughs> Retract. Um, go ahead and delete that control part Z. guys. Um, control Z. control Z. Um, no, but we have heard different, um, sermons on this. We have, and um, and so when when this theme kept coming up as I was studying the scripture of fear over and over and over again, um, it it just seemed so very human of him, you know, like you're saying, like it's it's a common thing that we all struggle with, and yet, in spite of that fear, he still moves forward, and I think that sometimes. Um, for us as humans, you know, as people, we allow our fear to keep us um, from moving forward and moving out in faith. And I just thought he was a good example. You know, Gideon is not perfect. His his uh, he he makes some mistakes after uh, he wins, and um, it is a stumbling block to Israel. Some of the choices he makes and. Mm. Um, you know, he's not perfect. He doesn't get it right all the time. But when God called him to move, he moved. You know, like it might have taken some coaxing along the way. A um, couple but, of miracles he here did. and there just to prove his point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he he does ultimately do what God is asking him to do. 
Um, and so, yeah, I appreciate that about it as well, is that it's very human. And I think any of us can see ourselves, maybe not, you know, going in, in the power and might Gideon did, but we can see ourselves definitely areas in our own lives where we are held captive to fear and we let it be the louder voice over, over faith that God is moving and able to save. So, yeah. 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 I, um, I don't know to me, like I see the, I see the fear in there, but the thing that stands out to me more is God intentionally choosing a guy who is fearful, who mm-hmm. is not bold, mm-hmm. but so that he gets the glory. Yeah. And, and we keep seeing that over and over um, in scripture. Um, you know, we've talked about it with Abraham a bunch that God waited until Abraham was super old. And then he was like, all right, now I'm going to do this thing where you're going to have children and um, this is going to, right. This is going to be a thing. Like, I want to make sure that even just in like who your kids are, I don't even want you questioning your own involvement in that part. Like, I, I don't want you to take credit for any of this and just the like, you, you followed my lead and I did this thing through you in a way that you could not have possibly done yourself. And, and I think that that is so important in things like, you know, stepping out where we're afraid and even like, you know, that that's even been something that we've talked about multiple times with planting this church, like, and even what kind of church we want to be moving forward, not just like, okay, we started it and now it's running and now it goes and, and we're not planting the church every week. We're now leading a church and trying to, you know, grow the people in the church and reach our community through this church. And as we do that, that's a, um, we don't want to be the kind of church that is setting things up in a way that we can take credit right. for it. We want yeah. to be the kind of church that God seems to prefer his people to be where, yeah, no, this, this only works if he's in it. This only works by his power. We're only doing the things that he's telling us to do. And that's not just something that we saw in imperfect people like Gideon. We see that in him, but really that's something we see in Jesus too. He says, I only do what my father tells me or what I see my father do. Mm. And, and he straight up says, like, I, I don't just do what I want. I'm doing my father's will. Yeah, for sure. And, and so he even shows us that, like, that's not, um, that's not just a sign of our inadequacy and failure. It is, a, it is the right way to follow God is to seek and serve him in a way that he gets all the glory and that it's all his power yeah. that makes it happen. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it was actually, it was really hard to write this sermon um, this last weekend with the scripture and and jumping off of Hebrews. I mean, Hebrews goes back to that, like, who's, um, who were made strong in weakness. You know, that is the call to Gideon is like, he's made strong in his weakness through God. And so there's these like, there's, Mm. this was a week where like the sermon went long and I probably still could have preached for like another hour because... There are so many strong themes here. Like there is, there's that strength in weakness that the Lord will be glorified and honored and that he is using Gideon and the army and Israel to show his power and display his power. And he wants Israel to know that they need to be dependent on him. And so then there's this, you know, kind of collision of these themes of like faith and fear of moving forward. Um, when you believe that maybe you are not enough, we see that Mm -hmm. in Gideon, we see this theme of weakness and strength. And then we also see this theme of Israel, um, and turning to false idols and worshiping and wandering away from God. And it's like, there's these three things we could have spent three weeks just Mm -hmm. on Gideon, you know? Um, yeah. And so it's like this beautiful collision in this person of Gideon, even of the state of Israel mm. um, and and where they've found themselves and why. And we just see um, we just see that working out through the account of what he does um, over and over again. And even the fact that he, as a judge, is sort of our first like imperfect judge. You know, he yeah. makes mistakes as a judge and he's kind of the first one who's not like hundred percent right awesome. Things. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, he s- sort of starts that cycle. Yeah. 
the the toilet bowl is being flushed. Wow. <laughs> the cycle. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would it's, yeah. Judges is a downward spiral. It is, it is. And Israel slowly becoming the stinky mess that at the end of it, the stuff they do at the end of the book of Judges is insane. Yeah. I mean, they try to annihilate one of the other tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. They, um, one of the Levites serves as a priest of a foreign God. Yeah. For idols in somebody's house. I mean, it just, it's crazy. It's yeah. absolutely nuts. They just like go off the deep end and it, it almost looks like, um, it's funny. Some of the, um, Oh, what's the show now? I can't remember. Anyway, there was a science fiction show that like related back to earth and the, uh, you know, so it was like supposed to be like post earth, like here's, you know, some earth refugees, you know, who have fled and, and are distributed around the galaxy and engaging in all these other things. And, um, and one of the characters is a priest. And, and it's really kind of a weird holdover because like a couple of times in the show, they address the idea of like, what happened with your whole thing? Like, how do you still have faith after we ended up like this? And his like exp his response and explanation feels kind of like that, like the Levite at the end of judges. It's like this. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's sort of whatever, you know, like I don't really have faith in God anymore. It's just sort of this like, yeah, I mean, I'll be your priest and kind of however you need it at this point. Mm. And it's like, oh, that's not it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not what this was supposed to be. There was an actual mm -hmm. engagement with the true and living God um, that was meant to be a, a, the central part of not just, uh, you know, the office of priest, but of the people of God and of all people, that that is part of our purpose on this life is to know and engage with and worship God. Um, so to shift us in a little bit of a different direction, a little bit, yeah. um, <clears throat> coming back to that idea of doing things that only can be done through the power of God mm. and by his hand. And how do we discern those things? How do we understand those things? And even when we're afraid, like Gideon is terrified. And so there's that in there, but even more, there's a, a doubting, Mm. there's yeah. a, like, I'm not sure if this is really God. And so it, it brings us to this thing that's sometimes known as a fleecing prayer, which I think is a terrible way of uh, titling this because it makes it seem like that's the thing you should do. And um, prayer. it also seems like you're like taking advantage of someone. Right. So. Which is where I think that often <laughs> ends up coming from is like, yeah. it comes, it goes along with people who overemphasize this end up teaching prosperity and other her heretical false gospels. So, um, you know, <laughs> shots fired on purpose. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as we, as we look at this, um, so Gideon does this, Thing where he puts out a fleece and he says, if this is really you, then let everything else uh, be uh, dry and let the dew just fill this one fleece. Yeah. And the next day it's you know full of water and everything else is dry. And he goes, okay, just one more time, do the opposite so that I know it's not just like, this is a super sponge and it's awesome and it sucks up all the moisture that would have gone to everything else. No, like show, show it the opposite way. So let's, let me see it both way. Like, let me see this tiny, ultimately meaningless thing. Like that had no purpose in the battle mm -hmm. or anything else. It was purely a way of Gideon trying to identify like, if you're really God, then something so outlandish and miraculous could happen please show me that so that I know I'm not just making this up because like we are dead if I do this wrong. Like if I step into this thing that cannot be done by human effort and I do it without you and it's not really you, you're just some guy messing with me or some false God, like we're toast. Like, how do yeah. I know, you know, that you really have the power to do this? And if you have the power to back up all of that, show me this little thing, this wouldn't be much for you. And, um, what, what do we do with that as far as, the example that that sets for us. How do we live with that in scripture? I mean, should we write a bunch of books on how to properly do that, on what kind of fleece to get and how big it should be and that so that we can always test God with every prayer request we have? I love Lucas, when you no. ask questions you don't actually expect us to say yes. 
<laughs> what? Well, it needs to be 18 cubits by... <laughs> right. 18 uh, cubits. That's a big <laughs> sheep. <laughs> hey, we're doing this right. <laughs> Mega sheep. Um, bah. All right. So... <laughs> The the kind of the beginning of this, I, I see a connection with Moses, mm-hmm. where Moses, God says to do something, and Moses, <laughs> I in my head it's always like Southern hillbilly. It's like I don't speak too good, <laughs> like, <laughs> and and God goes, fine, your brother will speak for you. I think Aaron speaks once, and then that's it. Like <laughs> it's like no, yeah. this isn't. Yeah. This also, isn't no, it, it references is, it more times. I thought that too, but it does reference. Does it? it does it? it okay. Does, yeah. yeah. But but I see that just like that hesitation of trying not like this. I don't like. Do I? I don't know what I'm getting myself into. Yeah. <laughs> kind mm-hmm. of thing. Um, I, I see that kind of with the questions. But I but I also see an environment where in his household they're obviously worshiping false gods. Right. The people around him are worshiping false gods. Um, I'm would put money that there's false prophets around saying that things are coming from God that aren't. And so for somebody to show up and, hey, do this, he's going, like... Who are you, bro? Okay, this isn't the first time I've heard this. Like, mm-hmm. you're going to need to be, be, be a little bit more... Uh, show a little bit more than just telling me to do something. Yeah. Um, in my life, if I hear something from the Lord, I'll ask others to pray and... I'll ask them, I'll follow up and say, okay, so did the Lord tell you anything? What's mm. like, is mm-hmm. it, is it just me? And I just got like this wild idea and I'm going for it. Or is there more to it than yeah, that? You want to know if it's the Holy spirit or bad sushi. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah. so I, there's the validation piece, the, is there a unity in the Holy spirit going on where mm. like, we're on the same page. We have mm-hmm. no reason to be, but for some reason things are lining up and we're all, we're all coming up heading in the same direction. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they cast lots, right? So right. the, the difference, one of the differences that I see between old and new Testament is the Holy spirit, mm-hmm. uh, the indwelling Holy spirit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Cause the last time you see the casting of lots is in acts one. Yep. Right. Where yeah. they, they cast lots to decide that Matthias or Matthias or however you want to say that is the guy who's going to replace Judas Iscariot as one of the 12. Right. And then the next thing that happens is Pentecost, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. And so now seemingly they don't need that anymore. Every time somebody needs to know the will of the Lord, they go to the Lord in prayer and the Holy Spirit speaks to them yeah. and answers yeah. them. So, so there's, there's a balance between how Old Testament operates and how New Testament believers operate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so were the Old Testament people supposed to start using fleeces? Not all the necessarily. Time? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying that I recognize yeah. that it does happen, that those kinds of things do happen more often, and God does validate in those moments. Um, not yeah. all the moments, not every single time, but there is it doesn't prevent God from speaking to somebody or he go, right. doesn't go like time out. No, we're not doing this. Like you're going to do what I say or, or uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to light you on fire. <laughs> 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 Thinking altars, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I was like, um, light you. I, that didn't... So gotcha. anyway, um, he's going to light you on fire. That's what he was. It, <laughs> it is not a principle by which we should operate. Hmm. It is, it is a good way to not do something because if you come up with something that's so outlandish, like, yeah, God could do something that is completely outlandish, right. mm-hmm. completely bizarre. But you could also go the other way and make it so common. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's like, nope, God, he, he, he made that, that candle fall down. Like, yeah. that was, right. like, <laughs> right. yeah. like, is this, okay. is this prescriptive or descriptive? Yeah. And it's okay, totally Okay, God, if a, if yeah, a car drives by in a little bit, then you're saying yes. All right, I'm going to go do that thing. Sweet. You and know. and you actually see that a lot with yeah. people in their prayer life, um, right. especially people that might not have much of a prayer life mm. where it's like, oh, mm. this thing is going horribly well. If Lord, if you get me through this, like like right. the, the getting me through this is the evidence that, you know, mm. I need to move forward. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. And it's, I have so many thoughts on so much of this, but yeah, it, it's crazy how much we will try to take one example and make that 
an absolute prescriptive method for understanding God's ways. Like I remember as we were praying through uh, leaving a ministry position and part of the thing was I'm looking at it going, you, you know, looking at uh, from the perspective of um, there's a book called A Tale of Three Kings and it talks about among other things, uh, it talks about King David and how he related to King Saul, who came before him and who he served under. And then Absalom, who came up under him, gets himself elected king kind of in an illegal election type of thing and anointed and declared king and then tries to like take over his father's throne. And so and it's like David with Saul, David trusts the Lord to take care of Saul and doesn't t move against him at any point and learns to duck when Saul is throwing spears and, <laughs> and, and he gets out of the way. And then when David is king and there's a guy coming up under him who's trying to take his power and threatening his life and all this stuff, he moves out of the way and he leaves town until the situation resolves itself through others taking action. And the Lord sets up some other scenarios where it's handled and he's like, either way, like I'm not the one who's going to determine who's in charge or not. I'm going to let God work this out. And, and so I was in a situation where there was some, some strife and some difficulty. And as I was leaving and going, I don't want to be the one causing issue. So I'm going to step out of the way and, and let this be what it is. Like God knows who's here. It's okay. And then some people were like, well, but when it's hard, that's a sign that that's God's will. Like, look at this. Mm. And I was like, just because this mm. sucks doesn't mean that God wanted it this way or that I need to stay in it. Like, mm. that's ridiculous. But also when we look at something and we go, well, if it's easy, then God has made the way. No, sometimes God does lead us into really difficult situations. And like, we see Jesus go through that. He promises us in this world, you will have trouble. And so like, it's dangerous to take just one little thing out of context without looking at the whole picture, right? Yeah. And and so we can't just look at this and be like, oh, okay, well, we should always test the Lord like this. On the other hand, as you shared, we've had several significant decisions in our life yeah. led by and, and confirmed by yeah. God answering kind of random prayers, things like even on Sunday you shared about, you know, we'd been praying for a while about, what, uh, where we were going next. And if, if next was staying at a church we were at, or if next looked like moving on to something else and, and we felt some calling and, and some leading from God, uh, that seemed to imply that next was not going to be at our current church at the time. Yeah. And, um, and, and that prayer of like, okay, God, fine, you know, I, I don't know what to do and I don't, we don't know how to move forward or when or how this is going to work. So if you want this to happen, then have, have this particular scenario that's very plausible. But in all the years you had worked in the office, that exact thing hadn't happened. No. And so to say like, okay, for the yeah. first time ever, have my boss walk in and sit in the chair in my office and ask how I'm doing. Like, and that like very specifically thing like hadn't. that chair. Yeah. And then that happens <laughs> like right after you finish. Ten praying. minutes, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's. Crazy. And it was the end of the day. I didn't even like the fact that he was still even there. I didn't even know when I was praying that. Yeah. <laughs> he could have been gone. <laughs> you know. Right. I was like, I don't really want to leave. Anyway. Um, yeah. But so we've had we've had yeah. several times where that has worked. But even in that, that was that was not flippant decisions. No. And that wasn't where we were go looking for justification for sin because I've heard people claim random stuff like that. Well, you know, I asked God if I should cheat, leave my family and cheat on my, you know, spouse and, and go, you know, start a new family elsewhere. And, uh, you know, as long as a leaf fell off the tree and I walked outside and a leaf fell off the tree, so I left my family. Like, I mean, it was what? October, but hey. Yeah, like, yeah. So like, that was super dumb. Why would you say something like that? Why would you do that? Why would you think that somehow that's God's will for you? Like, none right. of those things make any sense. This was just like this. Like, this is Gideon going, if it's you, I want to trust it. But if it's not you, this seems like certain death, essentially. Right. And for right. us, it wasn't like life or death, but it was, hey, we're not in a bad spot here, but it seems like you might be leading us this way. And if you are, there's a couple of big things that need to shift, and we don't want to be the ones to force that if that's right. not what you're calling us to do. 
help us understand where you're leading us. And, and I think that that type of scenario, which is still a little nebulous, that's not easily defined always. And that's not an absolute prescription, but I think that opens us up to a little more as we're seeking the Lord. I think there's a, a, tension of being open to this type of thing without being absolutist about it and being like that is the one and only way and i will do this and whatever answer i get is definitely the will of the lord and could not possibly be any other right does that yeah i think it's hmm. easy to you know through a cursory reading of an account in the bible to easily uh walk away with your own understanding um of of mm. you know you taking a descriptive text Plug like for house this church. right yeah come to house church so we can talk <laughs> about these things um but like d- taking a descriptive text and saying oh well that must be pre- that must be the way i should do it even yeah. though it's maybe an example of you know god's patience and long suffering and graciousness and mercy with gideon in this moment um that god does actually respond at all when he's already mm given him, um, like he has already consumed the offering. Mm, yeah. He's already declared like, I'm God, this is me. You know, I'm commanding you to go do, go do this. I'll be with you. Like he's already said these things and Gideon is still afraid and he's still at night is worried about the fallout. And sometimes fear is, is rooted in real things, real outcomes that, that are actually going to happen. And they do, right? Because like mm-hmm. the whole town gets upset with him. But there's this underlying, um, there's this underlying battle in the account of Gideon. I don't have time to go into this, right? Um, between the hearts of God's people worshiping other gods mm. and God's desire for them to be worshiping him. Yeah. And so like the first act that he has Gideon do is a declaration. It's a down with Baal, like I am worshiping God. Right. Like he takes down Baal's altar, mm-hmm. who Baal is the uh, Canaanite Phoenician god of um, fertility and also rain. Mm-hmm. Right? So then Gideon is now also... He, you know, he gets this army together and, and he's like, but Lord, like, if this is really you do this thing with the do. Yeah. And, and there's an element there of this underlying, like, are you bigger than Baal? Are you more powerful than him? Like, yeah. can you do this? There, there's an underlying yes. Spoiler question alert. there. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, and he <laughs> says, yes, I can, you know, like, yes, and not only yes, can I, but that wasn't an accident. And not only yes, can I, that first time, you get a bowl full of water. Like, not just a little bit, but like you filled up a Where whole... Where it's wet, you try to wring it out, and yeah. nothing happens. Yeah, and then nothing happens. <laughs> it's like, I know no, it's no, there. No, 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 this was like a lot of water. Like, God is more powerful, and God yeah. will prevail, and God will do this thing. And now that he's questioned that, God is like, and by the way, I'm just going to make sure that you know it was me. So now you have these 300 lesser men yeah. that we're going into battle with. And yeah. then not only that, but once the battle starts, like, this is how it's going. And, and they're going to... That you're actually not going to kill most of them. They're going to run away and kill each other. Um, and then you guys can go on in, you know? And so it's like this, it's this battle really for Israel's allegiance to God and their desire to follow him and to know that he is God above all of the other gods of all of these surrounding nations. Yeah. And so, yeah, and, and that is a whole like I said, like it's this beautiful collision of all of these, these currents mm-hmm. um, through the story of Gideon that, you know, there's not one sermon that could possibly encompass all of that. But, um, but when you take it into account for that, you know, Gideon's prayer is not, you know, God, are you going to give me a car? It's, God, show me that this is you. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that when when we ask God that question, He's going to show up. He's going to show yeah. us that it's Him, if it's Him. Yeah. You know, and so I, yeah, 
I, I think fleecing prayers are um, when they are not meant as a manipulation to get what you want out of God. Um, but they're, they come from that place of like, God, is this really you? Is this really your will that our God is faithful to respond to those? So. Mm. Yeah. And seen. Okay. And seen. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, no, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think, I, I, I think, uh, yeah, the heart behind it is a big piece of that because like Jesus says, you know, ask anything in my name and it'll be given to you. Right. You can say to this mountain, throw yourself in the sea and it will happen. If you have just the faith of a mustard seed, um, just a little tiny grain of faith. And those things seem to imply like, great, I can do what I want, but it's not magic. He's not saying you get to be a powerful sorcerer. This is like the genie in the bottle and just, right. you know, like as long as you hold the lamp, then I'll do whatever it's, you it's want. It's not a formula. No. Yeah, it's not a formula. It's about turning the hearts to it. And we see that. I mean, it's it's not even like an implied thing. It's explicitly laid out in verse 2 of chapter 7 of Judges. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me, saying, my own strength has saved me. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> you have 32,000. It's too possible that you guys could do this, and then you'll think it's you. And so um, I just... Like that is such a key aspect of following God. And I wish I'd thought of this even. Um, I think of a guy that I remember getting a ride to church uh, from a guy who was pretty well off. And and I commented on the car that he was driving me in because like my car was, my truck, you know, there was a piece of garbage at the time was broken. And so I needed a ride. So he's giving me a ride to church and we're driving like this fancy Mercedes or Lexus or some sort of, you know, very expensive coupe you know luxury car and uh and i just comment on how nice the car is and everything and and he's talking about like yeah you know i'm super blessed blah 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 and 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 i was like oh that's interesting um you know because i didn't think you really cared much about the whole like jesus thing you know god and he, he was like oh well no i mean like i don't really go to church but you know i me and god we have an understanding he blesses me and I make lots of money so that I can give to things as needed. And so, you know, I send in a tithe now and again, and I, I do some things, but I, I'm blessed so that I can do all this stuff. And then, you know, sometimes, and the thing is, is like one, he wasn't very generous with things. Like, I mean, he was giving me a ride in that moment. So I wasn't going to argue like, oh, I don't think you're generous, but really it was very self-centered and self-sufficient. Like, I don't need to bother with God because I have everything I need to make lots of money here and now and do this and do whatever I want. And then on occasion, I can do just enough giving back to feel good about it and to feel like I'm not selfish with my money. That's not to say like, make money, fine. God will even bless that, absolutely. There are some people who God will bless with that. It's not a, if you're following God well, you'll have lots of money. Or if you're really following God, you'll give all your money away and have none. Neither of those are what the Bible says we have to do. It's always only, always about the heart. Mm -hmm. That is the, the point. It rains on the just and the unjust. Exactly. Yes. And so when we look at this and go, <clears throat> no, man, like, I, I, wish, I, I wish you could recognize that what you're doing if you're doing it without God and saying like, yeah, 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 like I'm, I'm good at all this stuff so I can do it without him. So I don't have to go to him. I don't need, and that was part of his thing. Cause we did talk about it for a while. I'm not just misinterpreting one statement. We talked about this for a good long time. I think whatever situation we're in, if we have a humble heart that turns to God, then whether we are blessed or, and have a lot, or whether we are blessed only in a spiritual or relational sense where we feel the closeness of God, we can trust that we are in the right spot with God and that we truly are blessed because our heart is geared toward and pointed towards him, that we're not taking credit for things he has done. Yeah. Um, and, and I think of even like, as I was thinking of this and looking at this and, and processing this statement, it occurred to me that David is mighty in battle. Mm. 
and he's often blessed by God, but he is mighty in battle, and he is highlighted multiple times as being a very proficient warrior, yeah. and he draws other mighty men. I mean, he has his mighty men. David's mm -hmm. mighty men are like the legendary warriors of his day that all rally behind him because he is an epic warrior and a fairly humble, godly leader in most of the time. Not always, but a lot of the time. But it all starts with the first warrior type thing he does is he's the only one to stand up to Goliath. And that's not about standing up to giants in our lives. And what's the big thing that you're going to be afraid of and you need to stand up and sling stones at it? Or what are your five stones and all that kind of nonsense? Because um, every one of those sermons is just unbiblical. I'm sorry. Um, that's not what it's about. David hears Goliath blaspheming God and he goes, really? Right. We're going to stand for this? Why are you letting? God is not going to allow that. I don't care. I'll go. It doesn't matter. I don't even want your armor. Don't send me with all the stuff because it's not about that. The Lord is not going to let him continue breathing with that vileness coming out of his mouth in front of the people of God. That is not how this works. Yeah. And because, and I think because that is how he starts in battle, that is what, the, the Lord continues to bring, to utilize David because that's in his heart. That's where he's coming from with these things. Yeah. Is he has this heart for God and his righteousness. Yeah. And there's something that I want to go back to that you said. Um, you were talking about people saying, like, well, it says if you ask anything in Jesus' name, then he'll do it. And it kind of goes back to that whole like taking scripture and just taking the one line out of context and being like, yeah, I can ask for a Ferrari. I don't know why I would ask for that, but it just popped in my head. <laughs> um, and, and if I say the name Jesus, like it's somehow going to make it happen. But what the scripture actually says in John 14, it says Jesus is talking to his disciples. He's preparing them for his death, that he's going away. And he says, believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And then he says, and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it, but it's anything in according, like in, in vain, yeah. in that vein of doing what he's been doing on earth. It's not like, yeah. give me um, that really big house over there or give me a horse, you know, like... Yeah. A pony. I want a pony for my birthday in the name, you know, I'm not going to say it because I feel like that's blaspheming. But anyway. Yeah. Um, but, it, but it's not about the, in the name it's, like it's a magic word. It's right. in the name in the place of as I stand under the authority of and serve in his stead as his ambassador in this world. Right. Which is what right. all of us should be focused on as Christians yeah. is that God has given us good works to do in his name and then at that point whatever is needed to validate yeah that that's gospel, what we're whatever is needed asking for to move forward to follow the will of the father that's where it comes from yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And we forget it says like, we'll do even greater things. And we're like, we should be thinking like miracles. Like we should be asking like, Lord, give me, give me the ability to help this person see in your name. Not like, you know, I really want that outfit at, you know, whatever expensive store yeah. that is. So <laughs> oh boy. Refocus. Yeah. No, no, that that's good. So a heart pointed toward the Lord, the all things, and even more when we find ourselves in those situations where we may be scared or um or feel like we're inadequate, there's an opportunity there to display the glory of God in trusting him to do things that he is calling us to do, even when they seem impossible, because he is enough, and even more, he takes joy, it seems, in showing up in our weakness and proving himself strong, but also in doing that for his children. In the same way, like, I love it when my kids, you know, ask me to do something that they can't do, you know, when they include me, like... Open like this I, jar. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I love being able to be dad for my kids, and there's a little bit of that in the way 
uh, God looks after us too, that like he wants to be the one. Um, and because our hearts are so easily corrupted, it is dangerous for us to take credit for everything ourselves. Yeah. Right. So Lucas, any, any final thoughts on, uh, not taking credit, but giving God all the glory in our, in our lives. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I was thinking one of my cautious points and this, and this, I don't know if this relates to Gideon. I don't know if this is where Gideon was coming from because it doesn't mm-hmm. say this is what Gideon thought about this. Um, but having something that I have lied to myself about being the will of the Lord mm-hmm. when it's totally mm-hmm. of my own, that's one of those areas that I am highly aware of and most cautious. And and it's out of that place that I could see myself kind of doing what Gideon did here is like, yeah, I know what's right. Um, but am I doing that just because I'm frustrated? Yeah. <laughs> or is it actually what God is exactly. asking me to do? Yeah. Um so in in this the answers it as always comes down to prayer, like seeking the Lord. Not looking at the waves around you, but actually keeping your focus on God. Yeah. Your focus on Jesus and, and what his word says. Uh, obeying what his word says, not just going, yeah, I know it. Yeah. I mean, Gideon knows what the Lord has yeah. done. <laughs> mm-hmm. He um, does know. He says that. Like, yeah. where are, where is that God? You know, like, where have you been? Or yeah. not you, but... yeah. And God and, has abandoned us, is what And that's what we're called to. That's what the Lord asks of us, mm-hmm. um, is obedience in that. Yeah. And and oftentimes, you, you mentioned, Mandy, um, <laughs> the, the human knowledge or the human wisdom of don't leave your job until you find another. Yeah. Um, but human wisdom, because God is who he is, Mm-hmm. often doesn't align because right. it is to glorify God. And if it were, if you were just following human wisdom, then you can take credit for your, for that. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. And that's why we do that with, with PAX too. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot about the way we started the church and about the way that we operate that, um, I mean, not that we go like, no, 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 if a human came up with the idea, like it's only got to be things that were like told to us, you know, in a dream or something crazy. Like we're not being like idiotic about it, but just like, I don't want to, like we're, we're, we're following Jesus will. We're doing our best in every category to follow the will of the Lord. And as we do that, sometimes human wisdom says there's a different or better way to do it. And sometimes it's even like church wisdom, like, hey, statistically, this particular thing might go better this way than this way. We're like, but it feels like that contradicts the way God is calling us to head in this direction. Yeah. And I can see how that might be a good plan in a lot of scenarios. But also, as God is calling us, it feels like we're supposed to keep going this way and not do that thing. And I, I feel like the more we do that, the more God blesses it, um, not in flashy, tangible ways of like, oh yeah, and that's why we have a million members or that's why we have all this money or that's why, like, that's not, that's not the thing. But I feel like God is blessing what we're doing. Um, and, uh, as we continue to honor following him above the best strategies and statistics and that kind of thing. Um, and you know, I'll, I'll take that all day. Like, you know, John and uh, Peter standing before the Sanhedrin and going, going, look, you judge for yourselves what is right. But as yeah. for us, we can't help but doing the thing that we've seen and heard from God. And I, I want to be, I want to have that kind of response to everything in life of like, look, I don't know w- what else you might think is a good thing, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to like, my top priority is following Jesus mm. and, and honoring what he's called us to do. And everything else can come after that. And I think if we all do that, the more we all do that in every category and find like relentlessly find things in our life that are not in line with that and get rid of them or bring them into line with God's will, I, I think the more blessed we will be, not 
necessarily financially or lifestyle wise or, or situations or circumstance or any of that kind of stuff. But the more blessed we will be standing in the presence of God, knowing the will of God, responding to life in ways that are God honoring and finding the presence of the Holy Spirit and the blessing and favor of the Lord upon us and in us uh, on a regular basis. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And the more hope that I think we find we have yeah, in the face of fear. All right. Well, turn to the Lord and uh, follow him above all else and have faith. Don't give in to your fear. Don't give in to uh, other distractions and things. Don't let anybody turn you away from Jesus. And um, if you can't find it in the Bible, it's probably not Jesus. And just because you found it in one spot doesn't mean it's absolutely the way things always have to go. But just <laughs> as I'm saying that, I just have this weird like check of being like, eh, don't just tell people like, hey, if you come up with some weird idea and claim it was Jesus, do it anyway, no matter who tells you it was wrong. Like, this is not what we're saying follow jesus and uh it's pretty easy to um dig into his word and Mm -hmm. find out god's character and find out the kind of things that he leads us into and as he leads us he doesn't contradict his word Mm -mm. so um that's a really good filter for i think god told me to do this it's a good starting point does it contradict his word (laughs) (laughs) and his character. All right. With that said, I'm Brian. That's Mandy. That's Lucas. And this has been the PAX Deep Dive Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Share this with somebody who needs to hear it. Go be rad for Jesus. That's all. Goodbye.